We're back with journalist and author Bridget Schulte, and she's sharing her tips for how to make your downtime quality time. She's written a new book, well, relatively new. It's been out a couple of months mm -hmm. now, Bridget, called Overwhelm, Work, Love, and Play When No One Has the Time. So we wanted to leave people with some real takeaway, Bridget, because I think we all know how stressed we are. We know we're spread too thin, and there aren't enough hours in the day, yada, yada, yada. But we don't really know what to do about it. So you say one of the things we need to do is take time to pause, mm -hmm. which sounds nice, but what does that mean? You absolutely have to do it. You have to disrupt this cycle of busyness, take regular time to pause. Uh, there are great new brain scan studies that show that if you pause for as little as 20 minutes a day, your brain actually expands again. Uh, take that time to recognize these external pressures to overwork, overdo, and be busy, and figure out, is that really what you want? One of the things I thought was so interesting in this book is that unstructured time can actually be your worst enemy. In other words, you have to make time to have time. So will you explain that? Well, it's true. We all need unstructured time uh, to play, to have leisure. And so one of the things that I talk about is until it becomes a habit, because we don't value leisure, Put it in your schedule, put it on your to-do list, put it up high until it becomes a habit. Okay, the next you say is, is set priorities, but, but what does that mean exactly? Well, oftentimes when we figure out what do we need to do, we put our to-do list together and it's 75 million items of all the stuff that needs to get done. And so then when you start your day and you start tr crossing things off willy-nilly, you get to the end of the day and inevitably there's still 65 million things to do. And so when I talk about setting priorities, it's recognizing that there are really very few things that are important. You know, yes, do good work, but don't overwork. Spend quality time with your family, which is connecting time, which doesn't necessarily mean driving them around to all sorts of different activities and overscheduling. And so when I talk about setting priorities, it's picking a handful that are most important and putting those first, putting them at the top of your to-do list. And you also talk about two different kinds of time, Kairos and Kronos, and this comes from the Greeks? This comes from the Greeks, and they described Kronos time as very much the time that we all live in, the time of the clock, the time of busyness, the time of you know keeping track of things. And Kairos time is they, they talk about the, the eternal now. It's the moment of the being fully present. And when time st literally stands still. When time liter literally stands still. And psychologists call that flow, a state of timelessness. And that's as available, really, as the next breath when you take a pause and just fully inhabit where you are. So how did your life change, or how did you change your life after writing this book? Well, I'm still a work in progress. Uh, but an, uh, you read chapter one, it's, it's incredibly different, which I'm very grateful for. I do pause regularly. Uh, I work in now uh, shorter pulses and then take breaks. So I, I work that into my day. Um, my family and I have completely recalibrated what we do, so I'm not doing twice the housework and child care. And I will say we're, we're still working on it, but last Thanksgiving, we all sat together as a family. We decided, what do we want to feel today? What does this day want to, what is this moment we're trying to create, rather than do I have to look like a Martha Stewart magazine? Um, and we figured out what's the work that needs to happen to make that, to, to make it come true. We divided it up fairly. We had a wonderful day. We all did the dishes and we all went to bed at the same time. Well, it's so fun to have you here and it's a subject that I'm very interested in, both sort of the social science and just how it affects our daily lives. Bridget, thank you. Joan, thank you as well. And everyone in our audience is going home with a copy of Overwhelm. So, enjoy.